Hi everyone and welcome to video 3 in the Flipped Teacher Professional Learning Series. In today's video we're going to begin to take a look at uh, Google Drive in greater detail, looking at some of the features uh, and some of the ways it can be used in the classroom. So first of all, to get to Google Drive of course we need to come to our Department of Education portal, click on the Google Apps icon, that will open up the App Launcher and then of course click on Google Drive and that will take you to your Google Drive. That's very brief. Now I just want to go through a brief overview of the layout of Google Drive. This is what we will call the home page for Google Drive. Uh, you'll have the Department of Education logo in the top left hand corner. You have your left hand menu bar. Um, you've got your settings tab, your settings bar here. Uh, account details in the top right hand corner. There's a search bar up the top. This is obviously your drive. The main details of the drive will appear here. And on the right hand side, uh, later on, will a, an information bar will appear. Uh, so that's a very, very brief overview. There are probably a couple of main features that you need to be aware of and that you will use uh, if you are using Google Drive in the classroom. Uh, the first feature is your drive, which is where you will upload things to. Now if you have a look at your left hand menu bar, you'll notice that all of the options are in black except for one which is in red, uh, My Drive. The fact that it's in red, that tells you that the information or the files and folders appearing on the screen here belong to your drive. When someone shares a file or a folder with you, it will appear in this bar here, Shared With Me, which at the moment is black. If I click on that, it will change to red and what is here in this uh, the file view will change. And you'll be able to see that everything's changed, the file names have changed, it gives me the date when something was shared to me, and it will typically as well give you uh, who it was shared to you by. So let's go back to uh, my drive at the moment, or your drive at the moment. There are a few things that are context sensitive, uh, particularly up here in the options menu. At the moment you see four options. Starting from the right is a, uh, a little gear icon. If you click on that, that gives you your settings. Uh, you can play around with the settings yourself. There's nothing too difficult in there. You can't really break it at all. Download drives is literally that. You can download the entire contents of your drive. Just be aware how much space that you may be taking up if you do that. If you're not sure how much you're using, down here in the bottom left hand corner it will tell you. Keyboard shortcuts, you can set those yourself, you can have a look at what they are, and there is also a help option here as well. The I on the right hand, uh, second in from the right, is the information panel. If I click on that, that brings up the information toolbar on the right. You've got activity, which tells you things that are happening in the drive, or you've got details. Details, of course, is context sensitive and will only populate if you have actually selected a file. The A to Z gives you different sorting options. They're fairly straightforward, and this uh, four square grid here changes the layout. It, currently, I have it in list view. If I click on that, it changes it to grid view, and you can see that the icon's now changed to list view. If I click on that, it takes it back to list view. I personally prefer list view. I find it much easier to navigate, but again, that's a very personal option, uh, and is very much up to you. Now, if I click on a file, you'll notice that some extra options will appear in the uh, the options bar. Continuing from the right, this first one here, three dots underneath each other, that gives you more options that you can do with that file. Uh, you can specify what program you want it to, that file to be opened with, you can move it to another folder, you can add a star which is somewhat similar to bookmarking a website, you can rename uh, rename the file, you can make a copy. This is useful if something has been shared to you. Uh, for example, if your stage leader has shared a pro forma to you, you want to make a copy for yourself uh, so you can adapt it for use in your class. Uh, or you have download, which quite simply downloads that file to your desktop. The next option is a trash can. That's fairly straightforward. That will delete the icon, uh, delete the file rather. The next one is a preview option. Now this next one here is also very important. It, this is the share button. This is one of the best features about Google Drive and I think one of the most useful features that we will find as teachers. By clicking on the shared icon, 
it brings up a dialog box. Now there are a few options with this. If I click on get shareable link, it brings up a link here and it automatically copies it. So I can then paste that link into an email and send it to colleagues in my stage uh, across the whole school or whatever is appropriate. Additionally, I can put specific people in. If you are, for example, in a team teach situation, you can give access to the other teacher um, simply by adding in their email. If you start typing it in, their email will appear if you've used it previously. If you haven't used the email previously, you'll need to type it in in full. Um, if you have, it will self-populate. You can also specify whether the person you are sharing the file with can edit the file, can comment only, or can view only. Now, obviously, the option that you use there will depend on what the file is. Um, if, for example, you are doing a, uh, a peer editing scenario in a uh, classroom, you have students um, editing others' work, you might want to set it to comment only. What that will do is similar to markup in Microsoft Word. They can leave comments about things that they believe need to be changed, but they can't actually change it themselves. Only the owner of that document can change it. When you share a file to someone, the person's name and their email address will appear here, um, but you can put as many people in here as you want, uh, one by one. I think this is one of the best features about Google Drive, uh, one of the most useful features for us. The next one across from, uh, from that is Get Link. Um, again, if I click on that, it will give me a link for this specific file, which I can then copy and paste into a into an email document and it will give you some information here that anyone at New South Wales Department of Education and Communities who has the link can view the file. So anyone in the DEC who has the link can automatically view the file, they can't do anything else to it though. You'll notice now if I click off that file, those other options disappear. That's why this is context sensitive. They only appear if you're doing something. Now, it's the same with a folder. I've got the same options with a folder. So I can share a folder with someone or I can share an individual file. So my, uh, my programming folder with my library program for the year, I've shared that to, um, to my team members, uh, to people in, in the RFF team, um, and they've all got access to that. Uh, and if anyone else wants access to it, I'm more than happy to share that to you. Um, but you, you've got the same options with the folder as you do with the file. Now, I mentioned before about how we can star something, a file, a file or a folder, and I said that it was something similar to bookmarking a website. Now, if you have a look at the main part of your screen here, you'll notice that there are two folders that have a star icon. And if I hover my mouse over, it tells me that they're starred. Now, if you have a look at your left-hand menu bar, you'll see that they're see that there is actually an option for start. As you move through, if you're a hyper-organized person, uh, my wife likes to say overly organized, you will have a larger number of folders as you go through, uh, and those folders may be buried um, a number of subfolders deep. To get really quick access to those folders, as with a website that we use regularly, we can star it or bookmark it. By clicking on this start icon, it brings up that file or that folder very easily, straight away, right there to access. And you can tell whether something has been starred by seeing it there. To unstar something, all you need to do is right click and select remove star. Very simple. And you can see that icon's now gone. If I go to my starred section, programming is no longer there. Really easy to do. The other thing uh, that I talked about before was sharing files and folders. The way to know whether you have shared something with someone is to look for this icon here. It kind of looks like a silhouette of one person half behind another. That tells me that that file has been shared. And if you have a look at this folder here, uh, and this one, you can see there's a similar icon on the folder that tells me that that folder has been shared. Now they are files and folders that I own, as you can tell here in the owner column, that I have shared with other people. To see files and folders that have been shared with you from other people, click on the shared with me icon. That's all for this video.
uh, and I'll see you in the next one.